Hey guys, so this is practice problem 10.10. .10. This is the solution to practice problem 10.10 .10 from the textbook Fundamentals of Electric Circuits by Alexander and Sadiku. So the problem asks us to determine the Norton equivalent of the circuit as seen from terminals A and B. And then we have to use that Norton equivalent to find I0. So this part over here connected to AB, this is our load, the 10 ohm resistor and minus J5 capacitor, this is our load. So before we need, before we evaluate the Norton equivalent, we need to remove the load from the circuit. So we remove the load and our circuit becomes something like this. So as you can see what I've done, I've just replaced these two circuit elements with just one block. So this block represents this entire impedance, right? Remember that impedances are complex numbers. So you have the real part, which is the resistance, and you have the imaginary part, which is the reactance. So we can combine them like this and just write it as a block to make it easier. I did the same thing over here for the resistor and the capacitor, and I just turned the resistor also into a, into a block just to make it easier to work with. So here are terminals A and B. So to find the Norton equivalent, we need to find the short circuit current between points A and B. So this is I short circuit, which is the same thing as I Norton. So here we can use mesh analysis. So these are our mesh currents. This would be I1, I1, I2, I3. So this circuit, this circuit is not well behaved. We're doing mesh analysis and we have a current source. So we have to write a constraint equation. So this current source is forcing the current to go up. So our constraint equation is going to become I1 because it follows the direction of the current source minus I2 because I2 opposes the direction of the current source. And the combination of these two currents is going to be equal to four at an angle of minus 90. This is our constraint equation. So we have three meshes, we need three equations, we have one. So now we need to know where do we write the remaining two equations. So we can draw our helping circuit where we turn off all our sources. So this source, a current source set to zero becomes open circuit, voltage source set to zero becomes short circuit. So it's gonna look something like this. So this is where the current source would have been, but it's turned off. So we can see that we have a super mesh here, and we have the previous mesh here. So we don't write KVL in the helping circuit, we write it in the original circuit, but we write it in the super mesh. So KVL at the super mesh is gonna be we, I'm going to start at this corner, so it all adds up to zero. So zero equals minus 20 at an angle of zero. Plus, you have eight. And in your current, I'm going to choose the current to go from left to right. So it's going to be I2 minus I3. Then we, here again, choose it to go from left to right. So it's going to be plus, you have the impedance, 1 minus J3, and it's going to be I1 minus I3. And that completes the loop. So now we can move the constant over to the other side. So we get 20 at an angle of 0. And we can start combining like terms. And if we combine like terms, we're going to get this. 1 minus J3 I1 plus 8 I2 plus minus, J, uh, minus 9 plus J3 I3. 
so I skipped some steps going from here to here, but essentially what I do is I open up parentheses and I just combine like terms. So this is our second equation. Final equation comes from the final loop. So this is loop three, which is over here. So I'm gonna start in this corner. So again, everything adds up to zero. We go this way, I assume direction left to right. So it's gonna be four plus J two times I three. And we go here going to be minus 1 minus j3 but we, we have the current going from left to right so it's i1 minus i3 and then here we have minus 8 and again we chose the current left to right so it's going to be i2 minus i3 i2 minus i3 so here again we open up parentheses and we collect terms. Long story short, you get 0 equals minus 1 plus j3 i1 minus 8 i2 plus 13 minus j i3. So now we have our three equations and we can put them into matrix form. So in matrix form it's going to look something like this 1 minus 1 0 1 minus j3 8 minus 9 plus j3 minus 1 plus j3 minus 8 13 minus j. This is going to be I1 I2, I3, and here we're going to get 4 angle minus 90, 20 angle 0, 0. So remember, we don't want to lose track of what we're actually looking for. We're looking for I Norton or I short circuit. So that current is simply I1. We don't have to find I2 and I3. So we can find I1 by Kramer's rule which is we take the determinant 1, which is the determinant of this matrix with the first column replaced by the right hand side and divide by the regular determinant of the matrix. If you do that, you will find that I1 is equal to 8.396 at an angle of minus 32.68 degrees. And this is your I Norton. So that's part of the problem. We found I Norton, but now we need to find Z Norton. So how do we do that? Well, we need to we need to find the equivalent impedance between terminals A and B, obviously with the load removed. So let's and also when we do that, when we remove the load and we're looking for the Norton impedance well, we need to shut off all our sources, our independent sources. So the voltage source shut off becomes a wire, short circuit. When the current source turns off, it becomes an open circuit. And the rest stays the same. And then we evaluate the equivalent impedance as seen from AB with the load removed. So the circuit is going to look something like this. So essentially it's the same thing as we have previously as we have previously. I've just removed the load. Load is not there. All the impedances stay the same. Your voltage source becomes a short circuit and the current source becomes an open circuit. And now we have to evaluate the Norton impedance. Now note that the Norton impedance is the same thing as the Thevenin impedance. So there's no difference. So we take a look here, we see that because there's no current source here, these two are in series, so we can combine them. So the top for now stays the same. And the bottom can be combined. The real parts add, so you get 9 minus J3. Here's AB. And now we see that these two impedances are in, connected in parallel. 
So we can do the product over the sum rule. So we get 4 plus j2 times 9 minus j3. And then we add them on the bottom. And in short, you get that Z Norton is 3.176 plus J 0 0.7059. This is Z Norton. So now we can construct the Norton equivalent circuit. So it's going to look like this. You have your Norton current, which we found earlier to be, let's write it, so I Norton is going to be 8.396 at an angle of minus 32.68. And that's going to be in parallel with the Norton impedance, Zn, which is 3.176 plus J 0.7059. Now, we want to find I0, and I0 was the current going into the load. We can recall here, I0 is the current going into the load. So, we need to reattach the load. Again, I'm going to just replace the load, because it's an impedance, with a block. So, the load was, 10 was the real, real part, and minus J5 was the imaginary part. So, this is our impedance. So now we need to find this current, which is I0. So we can find I0 using current division. I0 becomes, we have on the numerator, 1 over the load impedance times current the current source feeding the whole circuit, which is IN. I'm going to just leave it as IN for now. And then on the bottom, we have the, the sum of the reciprocals of these two impedances. So it would be 1 over 10 plus, uh, plus minus J5 plus 1 over ZN. And we just plug in those values. And we find that I0 is going to become 1.971 at an angle of minus 2.1 degrees amps. Now, let's say, so we, we found I0. Let's say you wanted to find the Thevenin equivalent. Well, you have your Thevenin voltage, which is simply V Thevenin is going to be I Norton times Z Norton. Your Thevenin impedance, Z Thevenin, is actually Z Norton, same thing. So if you wanted to, you could create your Thevenin equivalent as well. So that concludes the solution to problem, practice problem 10.10. .10.